Hey everyone, welcome to this tutorial on the differences between a listed investment company and an exchange traded fund. This is a slightly longer video because there's a fair bit to cover, as you'll see on the whiteboard right here. Um, if you have any questions, head to the Rask Finance website, which is where we store all of our other free courses, uh, podcasts, tutorials, etc. Um, you can ask me any questions you like on there. Okay, so what are we looking at? We're looking at a inv listed investment company and exchange traded fund. First of all, what the heck are they? Well, from the outside, a listed investment company or LIC or LIC looks exactly the same as an ETF or exchange traded fund. Now, it's what happens underneath, underneath the hood or when you dig a little deeper, you'll find some differences between the two. What you would typically, why you would be interested in either of these two things is because you want to invest in them and then when you invest in them, whoever controls the ETF or the LIC then invests that money for you in a diverse range of investments. So for example, if I have $500 or $1,000 and I've got my share broking account all set up, I can go onto the, sh the stock exchange and I can find an, e an ETF or an LIC and I can put my $1,000 in there and then that money will go to whoever operates these and then that money will be invested in the assets that, I, that the company has chosen. So. You would invest in these because you have either a small amount of money or you want to get some diversification or you just want to outsource the management. I mean, not everyone wants to pick individual shares, so they might get a professional who runs a, an LIC or they might get a professional that runs an ETF. So there, let's get into the differences. So the differences are, as this name suggests, a listed investment company, the structure, what you're actually investing in is a company structure. For those who don't know about tax or, or some of the legal stuff around that, uh, a company can file its own tax returns, it has a board of directors, it can make investments in its own name. So just like you and I could with our, with our own investments, we could put something in our own name, we could fill out forms in our own name, a board and a company can do that itself. Over here in an ETF we have a trust. Now a trust is slightly different. You might remember or you might have heard of the word trust before because a friend of yours might have a business, like a small business, and they say, oh it's owned by the trust. A trust is simply a holding structure. So it doesn't um, pay its own dividends, it doesn't have a board of directors. What it does is it just holds investments for you. So when we pull our money together with other investors in an ETF, all we're doing is we're just adding money to a trust and in return we're getting units. So if I put um, $1,000 in and the unit price is a dollar, I will get 1,000 units in return. Conversely, over here, when you invest $1,000 in a company and the share price is a dollar, you'll get 1,000 shares in return. So you'll get shares and here you'll get units. And they're really the same thing for the purposes of this tutorial. However, with an LIC, you might also get options and they're typically given to you or you buy them on the market at a later date, but they're typically given to you when you um, buy into an LIC that is really new or is about to go live, so it's about to launch you would get given options and the option is effectively just a contract which says you can buy more shares in the LIC in the future if you like. You don't have to, but you can. Um, we won't get into that now, but that can have an effect on the share price of a listed investment company. Now I'm just going to turn over the whiteboard because there's something I want to show you on the other side. When you invest in a company, as I said, you get a share. Now, a share has its own share price, which I've put in green down here, it might be pretty hard to see. But at the beginning, when the, e when the listed investment company is first launched, the share price and the value of the investments that are inside the company will be the same, or roughly the same. So it will be just down here. But what can happen over time is that the value of the investments that the company makes, which is called the NAV, or the net asset value, so the value of the assets, can deviate from the share price. So what we can have is something like this. So you can see that this terribly drawn green line here is deviating from the blue line. So the share price is changing. Remember this is the share price, I'll do a big SP here. The share price is different to the value of the investments that are inside the LIC. Now why would that happen? Well, there are a few reasons and this is where investing in LICs can be good or it can be bad. Normally when you think, oh, I'm going to invest with this investor and they're going to invest my money and it's going to be great, you think that the value of your investments would hold pretty still or the value of your, your investment would hold pretty 
firm to the actual investments that the company or the person is making. Well, what happens here is the value of the, the investments that the company makes, which is this blue line, might not be appreciated by the market for the shares. So what I mean is the share price is the just like any other share on the market. You, it can be driven by supply and demand. So if there's not many shares in the LIC, the, uh, the value of the shares might be lower for longer. Or if there's not much trading activity, the share price might not reflect what is actually inside the company. So what you can find is, for example, during the global financial crisis of 2008, 2009, you could see that the share price was below the net asset value. So if you theoretically, if you were buying shares at say 60 cents and the net asset value was a dollar, you would effectively be getting 40 cents for free. Obviously you don't get that given to you, but what you are buying is cheaper than what its actual true value is. So an LIC can actually deviate from the net asset value. The share price of a listed investment company can deviate from the net asset value or the investments inside the company. Now, an exchange traded fund is different because an exchange traded fund typically just buys and sells whatever investment is inside the trust or the fund. So what I mean is it would look like this. Once again, a very poorly drawn green line, but you can see here that the green line hugs the blue line a lot better than in this instance over here. Now, the reason that this happens is because the ETF, all it does is provide you with a way to get in and out of the investments that are inside the ETF. So inside the fund or inside the trust or however you wanna phrase it, all it's doing, all the ETF does is if you invest your money, you immediately get back units that are equivalent to the investments inside the trust. Whereas in the LIC, which is what we call a closed end fund, all you're getting is the shares, not the net asset value. You're getting the shares. Whereas over here, you're actually getting the net asset value. You're getting whatever's inside the ETF. So what strategies might you find inside a listed investment company or an ETF? The strategies can vary inside each of them, but in an illicit investment company, they're typically active strategies. And by that, I mean you're paying the person or the company that runs this listed investment company, you're paying them to pick individual shares or to pick individual bonds or what have you, just whatever it is, you're, you're telling them, okay, you can have my money, go and invest it and you can try and earn it outperformance. You can try and do better than average. Over here with an exchange traded fund, they first started with passive strategies or the opposite of active. So they're not actually going out and picking the best investments. They're just picking whatever um, is in the, say the index. So the share market index, they're just buying a broad basket of whatever's in there and you'll get good and bad stuff. You just get the whole, the whole lot and then you'll benefit as the share market goes up over time. So that's what we call an index strategy. You can also have active strategies as I just detailed here, but you can also have what's called smart beta or rules based. And these effectively ETFs that just use a set of rules like buy this, sell that, um, and they look for things or patterns in the share market and they buy and sell based on those patterns. So how do you buy each of these? I've already said, but you can buy and sell a listed investment company or exchange traded fund using a share brokerage account. The minimum is typically $500 plus some fees to get in and out. Um, and what about taxes? Are you paying taxes? Yes, of, of course. Uh, so in a listed investment company, you're going to get dividends or typically you'll get dividends. It's not always the case. You'd want to look at the, the strategy the company or the LIC is using. So you'd get part of me, dividends from the company, and that might be every quarter, every six months or every year. You'll pay tax on that. You'll also get um, the benefit if the share price goes up over time and you buy low and sell high, you'll pay what's called capital gains tax. In an exchange traded fund, it's slightly different because remember how I said that the trust doesn't actually own the units or the investments, it only holds them for you. Well, you'll be you'll get an annual statement after the financial year is finished saying what your part of the trust earned and what it is liable for in tax. So for example, if you only own 1% of the trust, 
then you should only pay 1% of the tax, right? That happened or that was incurred throughout that year. So you will get an annual statement which will break down how much income tax or how much income you earned, earned and how much capital gains you're responsible for. You'll also pay tax or capital gains tax, CGT, when you buy low and sell high, just like you would with the shares over in this example. Finally, what are the fees? The best place to look for the fees and costs for an illicit investment company is to go to the annual report, and that's issued annually or once a year. The annual report, that could be on their website or it could be in your brokerage account, you might be able to find it. But look for the annual report. The fees that you pay to invest in a listed investment company is a management fee, typically or almost always, and then you occasionally, almost always, pay a performance fee. So you'll be able to go into the annual report and you'll be able to see how much in management fees you paid and how much in performance fees you paid. But you'll also pay fees or costs will come out of the value of the investments for the expenses of the company. So the comp this is a company, right? It's got to pay for marketing, it's got to pay for um, accountants, it's got to pay for lawyers, it's got to pay for just general fees and you know expenses. They all come out of whatever is invested in the company. So you'll have to look in the annual report for that and when you look at it, compare the, the fees but also the costs for the listed investment company versus other listed investment companies. An ETF is much easier to understand, in my opinion, to get the true um, and transparent pricing and costs of, of the, the strategy. So you'll pay a management fee, which once again, you almost always do, um, and you'll occasionally pay performance fees. Now this is rare in Australia at the moment, but in the future I see that becoming much more prevalent. And the two things that you should be looking for, the two figures, are the ICR, or the in indirect cost ratio, or the MER, which is the management expense ratio. We've got definitions for these two fees and ratios on the RASC Finance website. I'll link to them below. But you should be using these as the basis to compare different ETFs in the market. And if you're confused about any of this sort of stuff, you can go to the ETFs PDS. There's a lot of different letters in there. PDS or Product Disclosure Statement, which is on the ETF issuer's website. So go to their website or just Google search for the ETF's name and then PDS and it should come up in a PDF and you should be able to download it and look at the um, different fees, the different sh the strategy of the ETF, the, the tax structure of the ETF, um, all different types of stuff that you would be looking to answer from any of this information here. So I hope that clears up the differences between listed investment companies and exchange traded funds. Probably the one part that I didn't explain very well was the difference in performance between the two. If you have any questions on that, please head to the RASC Finance website and um, I'll be sure to clear those up for you. But um, if you have any other questions or you want me to add something to this video, please do. Um, the RASC Finance website has loads of other videos just like this on hedge funds, managed funds, ETFs, index funds, you name it. So um, cheers to our financial futures and thanks for tuning in.